Hello and welcome to the DFM Pro Quick Start Guide. My name is Tyler Reed and I'm the Manufacturing Specialist here at Go Engineer. Over the next few minutes, I'll be covering with you what the DFM Pro product is and how to run it within SolidWorks. DFM Pro is a rules-based SolidWorks add-in that allows you as the designer to compare your files against known good design for manufacture rules. It's an added intended to help you analyze your parts and check for potential design flaws, mistakes, or trouble issues that may arise during the manufacturing process. By analyzing your part before you send it to the machine shop, we can save time and money in the overall product lifecycle. This add-in is relatively simple to use. We'll be covering three different examples in the span of five to ten minutes. The basic workflow is here. Within SOLIDWORKS, I'll start the DFM Pro add-in, then we'll select a rule file, we'll choose the manufacturing process for the part, we'll then run an analysis. After the analysis is run, we assess the results and then generate a report and make any design changes that we may need based on those results. We'll be running through these steps several times over the next few minutes to help you familiarize yourselves. So let's jump into the software. I have open here a part that I've created. Uh, it's a part that I've designed with design for manufacturing in mind. I've used the whole wizard where I could. I've tried to create my pockets shallow uh, to avoid small tooling. But it's always good to have a second pair of eyes on your part. And in this case, that second pair of eyes is going to be a database full of known good values taken from industry best practices. In this example, I'm assuming we're running a network-based license of DFM Pro. And if that's the case, you will normally keep the add-in turned off so as to not occupy the license. When it's time to use the product at the end of the design process, we would come to Tools, Add-ins, select DFM Pro from the list. Now we'll check the box only on the left. The box on the right in this menu We'll tell SOLIDWORKS to start this add-in by default on every subsequent session of SOLIDWORKS. And that's not what we want. We want to turn it on just for this session. Once it's started, the DFM Pro tab will show up in the Command Manager and we'll say Start DFM Pro. I have a default setup here, which means I have one rules file called allrules.dfm. And within that rules file, I have several different manufacturing processes. So the first step, select the rule file, is simple in my case. The second step is where I would choose how I'm going to manufacture this part. If it's going to be milled, I would choose prismatic mill. If it were to be turned on a lathe, I would choose turn. If it's sheet metal part, injection molded part, a cast part, or a die casting part, I would choose the correct option. So once I choose milling, I select run. And while this is analyzing, DFM Pro is looking at the faces of the model, identifying machinable features, and then looking at some parameters of those features such as depth, diameter, spacing, and running those parameters against a rule set or a database. The results are then given. It looks like I've failed six rules in this case. The rules I've failed are deep holes, standard hole sizes, entry and exit surface for holes, thickness check, a user preferred material, and flat bottom holes. So let's take a look, a closer look at some of these results. Deep holes, by hovering over or clicking on the entry, I can get an explanation as to what that rule is. In this case, it's saying the diameter of the depth versus the diameter is too high. So we would have to use slender drills that tend to wander and are prone to break. So this is a manufacturing issue that could pop up as we create this part. If I expand out this rule, I can see the instances in particular highlighted on the part so I can see where I'm failing. It also gives me a numerical value as to why I'm failing. It's showing me the depth to diameter ratio. In this case is 41, whereas the recommended depth to diameter ratio is 8.0. So what do I do with this info? That's essentially a strategy that you and your team 
and your manager or to develop as you use the product. DFM Pro gives you suggestions and based on the flexibility that you have in the design of your part, you can either go back and make some changes to your design or work with the manufacturer knowing that this is a potential issue. Another issue I felt is flat bottom holes. Several instances of flat bottom holes. The reason I'm failing that is I can no longer use a drill to create that geometry. I would have to mill that out. If that's not my intent, then I may want to change how I created that feature inside SolidWorks so that there's no confusion when I send this part to the machine shop as to whether or not there can be a flat bottom or a pointed bottom to accommodate for a drill. So because we are on a network license in this scenario, after I've analyzed my part and I have some results, and I've gone through them a little bit, I can group the results by the criticality or the severity of a rule. I would want to go through and analyze this part a little bit while I still have DFM Pro Live. I might look at the critical rules that I failed and know that I have to adjust my part to meet those. I can look at the medium results and if I decide to dismiss any results I can actually click on the particular instance and select ignore select ignore all similar or if I want to zoom in on the results I can zoom in as well so with these results I'm gonna go ahead and generate a report so that I can turn my DFM Pro license back in. I'm going to save this XML file to my desktop. And it's going to show me some results. It shows me the rules that I've failed, the severity of those rules, medium high critical in this case. It shows me rules that I've passed but also give me some more details as to the location of these failures, the specific values of these failures. And this will give me something that I can look at offline in any internet browser so that I can actually turn off my add-in and release the DFM Pro license for the next user. And that basically covers the essential workflow of using the product. Walking through the steps of using the product is simple, but using the results effectively and efficiently is more difficult. And that's something that you'll get used to as you use the product, you work as a team to develop a strategy to use this product most efficiently. Let's take a quick look at another example here. I've got an injection molded part that I'm gonna analyze. If you notice the SolidWorks feature tree, this is an imported body. As I mentioned before, DFM Pro will work equally well with an imported body versus a part developed inside SOLIDWORKS. So I start the DFM Pro add-in. This time I'm going to select injection molding and hit run. Injection molding has one extra step in this case, and that's a pool direction. DFM Pro is going to create a virtual cavity and core and use those for some of the rules. And so it's our job to make sure those cavities and cores are made in the correct direction. In this case the default direction is correct. If it had guessed an incorrect direction I could select a face and hit replace and replace that direction. Notice in this menu there's also the option for secondary pull directions. We can add those by selecting a face and hitting this arrow. And that adds a secondary pull direction. If you are doing a mold with side action and you do need secondary or tertiary pull directions, go ahead and add them, but make sure you select the edit classification of mold faces and hit OK. Within the next menu, it will allow you to manually override what faces belong to the cavity, the core, and the side action. This checkbox is only necessary when adding secondary pull directions. 
In this case, I only have one direction, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And again, it's going to analyze the part. It's going to look at features and run those features against the rules base. We're not going to go over all of the rules today, but I will show you how you can go in and take a look at the rules as a whole. So just as before, we had the results delivered in this area here. If we want to get an idea of what sort of rules are being checked, we can select the Edit button on the All Rules file, and it brings up the Rules Manager and also a list of all of the rules within the Rule Manager. Within each rule, I can double-click and I can see the operators and the numerical values and the criticality setting of a particular rule. As an end user, you're not expected to change these and encouraged not to. These rules are going to be maintained by a manager or an admin. If you would like an, a verbal explanation of all of the rules together, we can find that in the DFM Pro Help menu. By expanding out DFM Pro rules, they're sorted by rule types, and with, within each one of these entries, we get an explanation of what the rule is and some example pictures. This is good reading, even just for a design perspective, to get an idea of uh, some of the situations you may want to avoid. The last example we're going to look at in this quick start guide are assemblies. This is a SOLIDWORKS assembly made up of several individual parts. Within DFM Pro, in the assembly mode, we can analyze this one of four ways. If we choose mill, turn, or sheet metal, DFM Pro will analyze each non-suppressed part individually for that particular machining type. So if I were to choose prismatic mill and hit run, it would run all of these parts individually against the milling database. This is a good way to analyze several parts all at once and get one results file. But there's also the option for assembly. By choosing assembly, it's actually going to run these parts together and look for any rules that belong to the assembly mode that are broken. Uh, examples of this might be materials uh, that are incompatible touching each other, interferences between parts, and hole alignment between parts. Looks like we may have some issues with hole alignments, minimum clearance between components, and even some interference detection going on here. Within the assembly, I would again generate the report and then turn in the DFM Pro add-in. If I wanted to leave a part out of the analysis, I could simply suppress it. So for cases like hardware where I will not be manufacturing the part myself, I would simply suppress the file. When I make a change here within the SOLIDWORKS tree, DFM Pro highlights in yellow and tells me I need to update. This is a universal behavior no matter what mode we're in, part or assembly. It's telling me it needs to be updated. So I would run the analysis again, and it would run it with the changes that I've made in mind. This is one way you can use the software. Keep it open, make changes to your part as you go, and continuously run, edit, run, edit, and iterate your part several times during one session of DFM Pro. So this is a very quick overview of the DFM Pro product what it is, some suggestions on how you might use it, and really just intended to get you familiar with the workflow and comfortable using the product enough that you might explore the help files, uh, look a little bit deeper into the rules file, and discuss with your team and management the accuracy and the applicability of the rules, and work with them to develop a rule set that is robust enough to give you the confidence that the parts that you're sending to the machine shop are manufacturable. So thank you for joining. If you have any further questions, please reach out to your local reseller or feel free to contact me, Tyler Reed, at tread, that's T-R-E-I-D, at goengineer.com.
Thank you. Thank you.